Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art Museums, Galleries, Exhibitions, and Supportive Housing. Uh, thanks, Nina Chung and Melissa Rosenberg, for having this idea for this really cool panel. And we're really glad that you're all here because clearly you have an interest in this. So this, as artists do, we kind of improvise at the beginning and, and we said, this needs to be more immersive. I'm, I'm sure you're already tired of having someone talk at you for the last few hours. And you're probably a little bit sleepy after eating the lunch. So now is the time for you to participate. So everybody should have something to draw on. Where is it? Wave it in the air. Oh, there we go. Now wave it with your other hand. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, we're going to give... And how many people in here identify as artists? Okay, so a few. Um, I'm not an artist. I'm a musician, which is a kind of artist. And we're talking about all different kinds of art today. So what we're going to do is we're, you're going to have 60 seconds... And you're going to mark on your paper. So you could draw something that comes into mind. You can identify what your physical feeling is right now. Like if you're feeling slow, you could have slow motions on your paper. If you're feeling frenetic, you can whatever. It's totally open. Um, we're going to have an art show afterward. Everyone at Shinny's going to see it. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, this is just for you, so no, no shame, no embarrassment. And ready, set, go. No pressure. <clears throat> Time limit. Fifteen more seconds. Oh my gosh, the pressure. I need more time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're not drawing. Oh. oh my god, oh my god, we are two minutes. <laughs> and stop. Oh, All right, let me see your pencils. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so what I'd like for you to do now is we're going to take two minutes and I'd like you to turn to your neighbor and share with them what you drew and, and how you were feeling when you drew it. So each of you gets one minute. You can Ready? get three some too. Yeah. yeah. Ready, go. I didn't know it was this kind of conference. This guy looks so familiar. I don't see where I'm working on. Switch partners if you haven't already. Yeah. I know that's hard. Yeah. 
Jen. Good morning. My name is Jen, and I'm an alcoholic. Oh, I'm sorry. I really am. And uh, um, so, uh, who feels? I just shared a very vulnerable thing, right? Who feels comfortable with maybe sharing what you and your seat partner buddies uh, came up with? Like, what was your I mean, don't all jump at once. I mean, it's just overwhelming right now. Yes. What's your name? Melissa. Melissa, you want to stand up and? Oh, that's it. You don't have to. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
you. Thank you. Thank you. So now you get to know who we are. My name is Carissa Antonio. I'm the Director of Arts, Culture, and Fitness at Lantern Community Services. And Lantern is a social service organization in support of housing. We have 16 buildings around New York City. And we just opened our first shelter this spring, so that's really exciting. Um, and I'm just going to go down the line here, so on to Jack. My name is Jack Howitz. I um, I'm an artist. I'm an artist, and I belong to the art collective at Community Access. Woo! Woo! All right. And he's a Springsteen fan. <laughs> and Jack has a fan club. Right. And I got a fan. <laughs> and I have a fan club. <laughs> I'm Amy Sharp, and I am the director of the Community Access Art Collective, and I'm also an artist. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Uh, no, hold your applause, just throw money. <coughs> That's fine. <laughs> okay, we're still there. Okay, good. <laughs> My name is uh, Jen Owie. I am currently, until next Friday, the director, the school director of the Apple Workshop Studio School. Uh, I resigned my position maybe three weeks ago because I started classes yesterday doing women in entrepreneurship, a four, uh, four month intensive with, I can't even speak today, um, four month intensive with Cornell um, with hopes to go into the business route and use my background in education, um, my life experience, uh, and uh, my love of working with people and students, artists, um, into something bigger. I have a name, but I can't say it, so. <laughs> mystery. Anyway, thank you for letting me be here today. Um, and I want to pass it to Lonnie. Yeah, my name's Lonnie, uh, Lonnie Braxton. I am an alumni and a graduate of Alpha, Alpha Studio School. And I'm also an uh, intern. Uh, I've been invited to do an internship after my completion. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Well, I'm so glad we got to do art together. And um, I have many things I'd like to share with you today, but the two things I'd like for you to come away with are that art is for everyone. And when you're dealing with clients or residents, it's easy to say, oh, over here's an artist, this person makes art, or this is a musician, and so let's funnel them into these programs. But really, everybody has a unique creative voice. And it's important that that opportunity be given to everyone and that we pay attention and listen to everyone. And that doesn't mean just resonance. That means all of you have a unique creative voice. All of you have history, experiences, things that need to be heard, things that need to be shared. And so art can do that for all of us in whatever form it is that, that you prefer. And the second thing is that art needs to be respectful. We didn't hold up anyone's artwork today and say, oh, this person's not an artist, or, or their voice isn't important, or let's give them some popsicle sticks, right? This is whatever you put out, your artistic output is valuable, and it is high quality art. And that's our responsibility as practitioners to make sure that the environment is always respectful toward the artist, which is everyone. So I'd like to share with you a quick video of one of our first public projects. I began the arts, culture, arts and culture program at Lantern four years ago. So we've come quite a long way and I'm really excited about what we've got going, if I can get this to play. I started dancing at the age of eight. I wanted to sing, I wanted to dance, I wanted to act, I wanted to do art, I wanted to do everything. I'm very jazzy, I'm very about lines, and I love hip hop. Dance is most definitely going to fit in my future. Like, there's no doubt about it. It's going to happen. 
I was homeless. And what I was doing, like street homeless, was I was finding things, putting shit together, and making me some art. I needed something to be around me that was reflecting me in a positive light, and I made it myself. It's been a great experience so far because I've got to meet a lot of great people. We're always running in here, dancing, and just laughing. This, this, this is hot. Being on stage is where you just live your life. Living your life has to be number one in priority. Like when I have emotions, I need to be able to dance and let it go. I need to do art, let it go. Sing, let it go. I still get goosebumps when I see them do that. Um, so um, this project, Mobilize, was a one of our, like I said, one of our first public pro programs, and it involved bringing dancers from Lantern Community Services buildings together with Eric Taylor Dance to choreograph and perform an original dance piece. And this was set to an original piece of music by DJ IBG. And uh, Matt Cosmetics came in and did our makeup, and um, we performed at Harlem School of the Arts and a, free, a few free public performances. So this was a really amazing, um, not only creative experience, but also uh, career building for our resident dancers. So the question is, and we were talking about this earlier, this is a supportive housing conference. What does arts have to do with it, right? Um, most supportive housing agencies don't have an arts wing or an arts activities. Most of the time, if we see anything artistic, it's art therapy. So there are many different tiers of arts that can take place in supportive housing. And the question is, why is this more than fun? Right? I get this all the time. People are like, oh, your job is so fun. <laughs> right? But fun is discounting the quality of what actually happens. What goes first is like, oh, I could have fun or I could do my laundry, right? Oh, I better do my laundry because that's more important. So there's, of course, there's fun and there's personal expression, but there's also really important things that happen through art. And these are the things that take us beyond housing first. We can give someone a room, but we can't give them structure through a, a room. We can't give them a community through a room. We can't give them an identity through a room. But the arts can do that for people. So arts programming can provide a structure within the building, marking days, times, marking an environment, creating safe spaces for people to connect with other artists, and also for staff to connect with residents. When you're sitting across the desk from someone 
asking them about their service plan goals. That's a very different environment when you're sitting, than when you're sitting next to someone creating and saying, I made this. What did you make? Why did you, how did you feel when you made that? Why did you make that decision about your artwork? Then it gives a freedom, a liberation to the artist to share the things they want to share and share the way that they wish to share as opposed to in some ways being pressed to meet these, these markers and these goals. Identity. Our residents in supportive housing come to us with loads of negative labels. Just think of some of the labels that we have. Poverty, mental illness, substance use, disability. All of these things, when you think of these words, these are not positive words, right? But when someone says, I'm an artist, I created this, listen to what I have to say, that is giving them power over their identity. It's giving them power to say, this is who I am, world. I'm a visible person. We know that people coming out of homelessness are often feel invisible. They're the people that people walk on the other side of the street. So the arts give an opportunity for people to become visible again and to say the things that they want to say. Um, advocacy. This is about changing the face of people. Saying, you know, for the people that say, oh, not in my neighborhood, not in my backyard. Saying, this is an individual, this is a human being that, that is creative, that has a history. And yes, that history may include homelessness, but it's a lot bigger than that. And they're a human being. So having that kind of presence. Um, at Lantern, our mission is to promote the independence and well-being of our residents. And so if you think about that word independence and how the arts could really play a role in that, um, in a lot of ways, our social services can, can kind of make people less independent in a way. Because we say, oh, you need our help. We're going to help you. But with the arts, it's their own unique voice. I can't change your voice. I can't make your voice. The only thing I can do and the only job that I have is to amplify your voice. And that's my mission. Um, at Lantern, we have a program structure. We have a fundamental foundation of ongoing weekly classes. We have cultural experiences and partnerships, internal celebrations, and then the tip of the iceberg is um, public performances. So ongoing weekly classes. Um, when I started the program four years ago, I really wanted to establish a, um, a foundation of weekly classes. So here is a list of, of the types of classes that we've held over the last four years. I wanted to share you, with you about this gentleman here, who before I came to start the arts program, he shared with me later that he wandered around the streets of his neighborhood or he sat in the TV lounge of this building and watched TV all day. He did, was not connected with the residents in his building. He just felt pretty aimless and unconnected from, from people. When we started the visual art group, he joined and immediately became almost one of our most prolific artists. He had never painted before. Now his apartment is full of art. He joined a digital photography class. He goes around the city taking photos of street art, and he incorporates the photos into his paintings to make multimedia works. And he has a new identity. He says, I'm an artist. He shares with his family, look what I made. He's been highlighted in, in a number of local galleries and um, he's also connected now with the staff. He's known as an artist. He's, he's connected with the other residents of the building. 
uh, cultural experiences and partnerships. This is a photo from our first showcase at the Museum of Modern Art, which is one of our cultural partners. Uh, we were thrilled to have our art up in the Museum of Modern Art, which who can say that, right? So um, you can see on our faces that we're super excited. Um, and, and cultural partnerships are very valuable. We, uh, we partner with School of Visual Arts, we partner with NYU, And um, it's very attractive to say like, oh, just go out and get a cultural partner, <laughs> right? That'll make, give you an arts program. But I, I just have to say, it will not give you an arts program. It needs you, it really does. If you don't have staff who are bought in to the idea of arts are for everyone, I wanna hear what you have to say through arts. I'll be here every week. I'll call you, say, where are you? I'll knock on your door and say, where are you? You know, come and share with me. I, I care, so I'm gonna follow up. If we don't have staff members in our facilities who are willing and believe in the arts and participate in it, I don't care who you get as a cultural partner. It is not going to be sustainable because they're gonna send someone in and nobody will show up and go out and they'll be like, sorry, this isn't working for us anymore. So it really requires from supportive housing agencies the buy-in of the staff and the support and the excitement of the staff and the dedication. So um, I, I can't say that enough. Um, but if you have that, or you can build that up, go out and get yourself a lot of cultural partners because they're a very rich resource. Um, Internal celebrations are really important. When I came to Lantern, we had no client art in our building. It was blank, it was institutional. There was fluorescent lighting beating down on you. Um, so gradually we have started to fill our community spaces with art made by the residents of the building. This creates an environment of ownership. It creates an environment of respect it transforms the environment. Um, having celebrations internally, we have about 175 special events per year. And those are really important opportunities for people to share and also for people to engage in a short art making activity or a photo shoot or a sing along or something that's more than like come down and get your hot dog and then run up back up to your room. And that's what a lot of events end up being. But even putting one little activity can connect people, that's building the community, it's introducing people to the practice of art, it's getting people to consider, oh, maybe I could go to that group, or maybe I could go to that institution. And then finally, public events. Um, this is, uh, these are my favorite, I have to say although we need all the other things, but the public events, self is greater than selfie. Uh, how many people here work with uh, youth coming out of the foster care system? A few, okay. So if you do, you know that they're, they are very resistant to being engaged and tired of being in programs and they're just like, I wanna do my own thing. So I have tried a few programs with them and I have to say, they weren't that, they didn't turn out that well. <laughs> People didn't show up, they were just like, okay, I'll be there for five minutes, oh, I gotta go up to my room, stuff like that. So I said to our moment educator, oh, I really want to try something that's a little bit risky, but hey, let's try it. And uh, so we decided to try to make a film about selfies and about how social media affects our lives and what people think about us when they see that. Um, and what our educator, I want to share this little bit with you. What our educator said to me was, it's okay if you fail. She's like, it's okay if we fail at this. We're going to try it. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. And I was like, whoa, you know, because we're all, all about this. Get this numbers, get this success, do this. And here 
or mm -hmm. someone from the Museum of Modern Art being like, it's okay. Take the risk and see what happens. Well, we didn't fail. In fact, we had 10 young adults actively participate in filming. And then we had 55 Lantern staff and residents submit selfies and answer this question. When you see me, you don't know that I, you don't know that I'm hurting. You don't know that I'm a good chef. You don't know that I have five beautiful children. You don't know that I'm a very funny guy, right? There, there are all these things that we don't know about each other, and that's what this project explores. Mobilize, you saw. Um, Sound Space is my m most recent project. We did this with last fall. We had uh, musicians working with um, our, our musicians in the buildings that are formerly homeless to create 13 original pieces. And we did three public performances of those. So you get to hear a little bit here. One of the places we played these songs were at our annual um, art show. And at this art show, we had 197 pieces of original art from our artists from across 14 buildings. And that doesn't count the cardboard strips that you saw in back of the musicians. And what that was a public art project that when we did the public performances, we asked people to to write down what, they, what message they thought the world would want to hear right now, or what the world needed to hear right now. And we incorporated those messages into the cardboard strips, in addition to having our residents from all different buildings design strips to be a part of this tapestry. So there are a lot of really amazing messages in there, messages of hope and identity. So what's next? Um, we got funding, again, from the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council to do Sound Space 2. So we'll be, which I'm really excited about. Uh, so we'll be doing eight more original songs with musicians from Lantern. We're also expanding. So the Sound Space 2 theme is home. And we're exploring what the idea of home means. One of the ways is by having a photographer work with immigrants that live in our building to say, what does home mean to you? It, it also is about having artists across our buildings create art which represents home to them. We're also having some panels. Um, one of them is with uh, El Barrio's Art Space, which is an affordable arts and um, talking about what's how, what are the housing struggles for artists? What, is, what are the housing experiences of people who are homeless? What are the housing experiences of people that are in gentrifying neighborhoods? And bringing everyone together to have these kind of discussions. 
So uh, I want to extend this to you. If you have folks that are making art or that you feel would be good with connecting with this kind of project, um, I would really like to expand beyond Lantern. And I feel like a little bit in supportive housing, the arts is, is kind of a lonely place to be. There aren't a lot of, of artists out there. So if you are making art out there, you do have clients making art, or you want them to make art, let's be connected and try to do a bigger thing together. Maybe next year at the Shinning Conference, we'll have a big art exhibit or a dance party. No. <laughs> <laughs> So I just want to extend that offer. Please come out and uh, talk to me about that. Also, if you want to start an arts program within your facility or your organization, and you're wondering how to do that from scratch, well, that's what I did at Lancer. And I'm happy to share and all the lessons, hard and easy, that I learned, um, and all the structures that I've created that would take up a really long time. Um, so if you have that interest, please come and talk to me. And I'm, with that, I'm going to hand it over to these guys. All right. Picture. Let's just take in that cute picture. Aww. <laughs> it might be cuter to us. <laughs> right? You want to start? Yeah. Those are our people. Yeah. Or those are some of our people. And the, um, the, the screaming person at the bottom, I intentionally put that there and I showed him and he liked it very much. <laughs> that he's, he's yelling because there's not enough hours in the day um, for everything. And, um, the, and we'll talk more about it, but we work really close with everybody. And so Dan, Dan really wants to be on Instagram. And so we're also working on how to be on Instagram. You know, we, how do you be on Instagram when you have a crappy phone? Like we take it for granted because I have a big old iPhone. But he was very happy to see his screaming person <laughs> on here. And everybody else are so good. Um, where do we go next? Oh, nope. Oh, now we introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I said, I'm, hi, I'm Jack Horowitz. I'm an artist. I've been part of the art collective. Can everybody hear? I've been part of the art collective for four years now, and I live in a community access building for 20 years. I can see. And um, I mean. the art collective has had an immense change in myself, both, both spiritually and personally. And um, I could, could say it's like the most important thing I belong to. I'm, you know, I'm 25, so. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's but the most thing I belong, um, that I've ever did for myself. And it, it's, just a, it's just a great place, and you'll hear more about it. So I'm going to mess this up a little bit. So I'm going to come back to this. Um, so I want to introduce the Community Access Art Collective. So our art collective is, while it's primarily a studio-based program, on the Lower East Side, we have a studio that's housed in one of Community Access supportive housing buildings. But not everybody in, the, in our collective is even living in a Community Access building. So our program is open to anyone in NYCU who also has a mental health condition. So this is some of our crew and i'm going to back up for a second i just want to tell you that before because i didn't have time to change slides so we're going to go through and talk a little bit about who we are then we're going to look at our community projects that although we're primarily studio based it's really important to us what we're doing in our community projects so we're going to look at our exhibitions in public libraries our live printing events our mail art project which we're very happy about. And then our friends and family, what it means to ask for support and work together. And back to our cute people. 
So we're going to tell you a couple more things about the Art Collective. Do you want to do that? We practice, but it's hard. Yeah. Um, oh, I should say, you know what? Jack came in on this in the last minute. So one of our artists wasn't able to be here today. So yesterday was like um, a cram. speed cram to look at slides <laughs> and fix them and get them in because we, we are working hard. So Jack's coming in after like very little time to make this happen. But I'm very happy. I <laughs> um, art, art collective members support one another, they inspire one another, and it's the main thing I like to get out. It's a real collective. You know, that's it's people working together with all the different kind of issues, mental health issues, coming together as a, um, as a unit. And, and really, a couple of people have said, which I believe, the art collective becomes your family, your extended family for people who might not have that in their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, um, so as a collective member, you're asked to volunteer and be a part of it. We try to really make it a collective. And you'll see as we go through that it's a constant, our studio is constantly changing. We try to make it work for more people. We. There's not enough resources, as everyone's going to know. You know, we all have this experience. So we rely on each other, and it's, it's constantly changing. Like, I'm not perfect, and I'm trying, and we're all doing our best. But it's a very supportive community, I have to say. Like, if the one thing is, like, every day coming in and just seeing each other, it really changes things, you know? And people coming in from the outside is really helpful, too, because a lot of our art collective members live in the building. But then you have people who don't live there, so it changes the dynamic mm -hmm. and it changes the conversations that are happening. Because it goes from being like, oh, so-and-so is doing this and we're upset, to like, um, we all got work to do. <laughs> like one artist said, you know, we all got bodies of work here. <laughs> you know, like, let's go. Um, so we're gonna tell you about our community programs. One more thing is that, given that we're kind of a work in progress, we constantly have these conversations about who we are. Because it's a collective, and I'm an ally, and I don't have a mental health condition, I'm sensitive to that. Like, I go out and speak somewhere. And when you speak somewhere where it's, people don't have that experience, the first thing I get is the awe. Like, oh, oh, what good work you do. <laughs> you know, and it, yeah, we all do. But it's a little bit of that mental health condition where it's not looking at everyone's identities, you know, that everyone has multiple identities. So we're always in conversation about who we are. So the post-it note on the left is from an art collective member meeting. And um, it says who we are. Oh, I should go to my cheat sheet. Who we are. Human beings who should be treated with dignity and respect a group of artists, artists helping and supporting each other, talented and fabulous, <laughs> artists connecting with the community and churches. Art is a part of the organization, structure, and discipline. And then, you know, the, for our exhibition, it had to be the nonprofit version of that is on the right. <laughs> the Community Access Art Collective includes artists from across New York City who are living with mental health concerns they have a commitment to developing as artists and supporting one another. So our first project we're gonna look at is our exhibitions. So we don't have a gallery, and I take that as an opportunity. Like, I don't think it's a bad thing. It means we're gonna get out. So we're trying to go out and build relationships. It's important to me personally that, what happens if this evaporates? Right? What, are we, what communities are out there that are already out there that our people can connect with, that they're already in, that we just need to access differently? So the reason we started exhibiting work at the libraries, and we've done two, and I hope to continue, is because people came to me in the art collective who are patrons of libraries and said, I want, to show, I want us to show there. I live in the area where I live in um, the Lower East Side. And I belong to the uh, Seward Park Library. And libraries have always been a very important part of my life to learn, to relax, um, knowledge, and um, 
I was just, I thought it'd be great when I saw that they do art, have art exhibits, I thought it'd be great for the art collective, because we're in that area, you know, well, this is, you know, logistically, we're in that area. I thought it'd be great if the library would uh, show us, show us our, show us, you know, display our paintings. And me personally, I've been living in the area 20 years. There's so many people who didn't know that side of me that I was an artist, you know, so they were able to uh, see everybody's art, about 30 pieces of art, but they would see mine, and I got really, you know, really, really, you know, I'm self-conscious about it, but I got really good vibes from about my pieces. And uh, I just showed people, um, I was glad people that I could, my friends, shop owners, people who I know in the community would come by and say, Jack, wow, that, that was great. And um, yeah, the library is just, just a fabric, and I thought it'd be great to start there, it'd be a great place to show art. I mean, learning and art, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, um, our second show was at the Queen Central Library. So our first one at, was at Seward Park, Seward Park which Library. is near our studio. And the second one was at Queen Central Library. And my lesson learned was the first one, we put the work up and we said the work of the art collective. And we said who we were. But I felt like we weren't con putting out enough of what we wanted to talk about. Because when we went to do media, it immediately was, well, tell me about your mental health condition. So I was like, okay, I'm not doing this right. I gotta set the stage a little differently. So our next exhibition, we called it Lived Experience. So the artists of Community Access Art Collective respond to the world we live in, dream of, and wish to occupy. And the reason we wrote it that way is because we wanted to start to talk about this idea that everybody has multiple identities. Everybody, everybody, nobody is one thing. So it's true, you know, in the art collective, and people would look at us and be like, well, let's talk about your mental health condition. And like, well, I'm also an artist. Like, so I had asked somebody who was doing press with us, well, did you ask them questions about their art? <laughs> like, and it was, you know, it's a learning curve for all of us, for many of us. So this was set up this way so that everybody, uh, one piece could be up that would represent the one body of their work about a subject that they're, they're working on. So people have multiple bodies of work, but we went with one each. So we're just gonna show you three works that show what three different people decide to put up for lived experience. The first one is Arturo Sitjar. So Arturo has a couple bodies of work, and humor in one set of work is really, like, it's really important to him. So <laughs> people wrote artist statements next, and we put those next to the work. So Arturo has, it's called Raptors Love Fruits and Vegetables. <laughs> right? It's good to enjoy life. If you have a laugh or two, it gets you out of a funk. It makes you see things from a different perspective. It keeps us going. I want my work to make you pause and laugh. All right, ready? Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> Yay, Susan's on. Um, yeah. Sorry, guys. The next artist I'd like to talk about is a woman named Susan Zellin. And as you can see by the uh, board, her painting is Man Overboard Trying to Get Help from a Seagull. Every, this is Susan's statement, every, everything is connected. The plastic, oil, and other stuff that we dump in our oceans are toxic to our planet, I agree. To the animals that live here and us, it poisons us all, I agree. I like swimming in the ocean when I was growing up, and I don't because of all the stuff I see when the tide comes in. I think everybody can understand. And because the beaches now, I can see that. Except South Beach. I, I want the world to be living, breathing, clean, peaceful place for people and animals to live. Hey, Susan. Then, I'm sorry. Okay, and just one more piece. This one is by the artist Bruce Dillon. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so Bruce, Bruce's piece, which is a little hard to see, so if you can, go online 
and check out the work online because there's more detailed work. And Jack, Jack's work's online as well. Thanks. But Bruce's, <laughs> I'll keep saying it. Um, Bruce's piece, Bruce decided to talk about medication. He decided to talk about psychotropic meds. And he has a longer statement on his webpage, but this piece is, and it's hard to see, I'm sorry, but each of these little white pieces of paper So what he did was he took all these psychotropic med pictures of them, cut them out, collaged them on, and then picked three of what he thought were the worst side effects <laughs> and put them underneath it. And then there's heads. These are heads that go all the way around the piece, you know, in the way of people are taking beds like it's pez. And he's, he, there's a lot of silliness in it. Like there's Michelle Obama giving side eye. <laughs> chance, go and check out his statement. So I gave you a little part of it here. It's a ridiculous cycle of dispensing medications. Of course, I ate them all and suffered the dismal unintended consequences. I'll give you a wish. I'll give you candy and pay the price of sugar-coated dreams. And that's also a self-portrait of Bruce back here. This is, can you see the eyes? Right? So I think in our I think in our last slide you can, I think in the first slide you can see his piece right here. Oh, yeah. Is that the Queen's Central Library? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's so good to be in a library. People just stop and talk to you. Um, we started doing, we would try to do programs if there was something going on to go there. It's such a good environment. I mean, you just see, you meet so many different people. and. It also changed the way our artists were seen in our community. Did I go the wrong way? Yeah. There we go. No. Er, 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 er. Going back. All right. So our next project, community project, is um, is we got our people up here. Um, is a uh, live live printing at events. Mm. So another time too that we're trying to be out in the community and we're we're. We're giving. We're doing, we host tables at different events and we help people screen print. We've done it, I think, like four times where we've been done, we've been at a couple public events. One was at a library, the other one was Andrew Friedman Home, and then we did it, we printed with staff once. So it's also another way, like, to getting, you know, artist roles are varied, and so getting out in the community and being artists in the community is, gets us out, and it's like, you could. People have skills. People have it, different things they're passionate about. So we're, we're getting out of the studio. What I'd like to talk about this, um, this form of art is that it's, it's, oh, it's, there's really no experience required. There's a picture of me maybe there when I was about, I don't know, 19, 20. <laughs> and, um, and, um, you learn from each other. It's a really um, cooperative. Everybody helps each other. I didn't know anything about screen printing, and one of the other members of the uh, collective taught me as I was as I was there. And it's really oh, kids love it. It's the most it's the most um, talked about thing at at, a, at an exhibit when we go to exhibits. Everybody wants to do it, and they want you close down at the end. You know, <laughs> and people still want to come. Yeah, we're like putting lids on paint, and there are, people are still printing. Yeah. You know, we're like, oh, we've been here for three hours. So, and then our last project we're going to talk about is my personal favorite, is we, we've been running different kind of mail art projects. And it started out of a need to try to reach people at times that you isolate. People isolate, right? And also, people don't always have family, and you get really crappy mail, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> oh, um, when, when you're in the, in, when you're in the uh, system, everybody's waiting to get mail, hoping, which usually it is, maybe it's a letter that Social Security is, <laughs> is, wants to, wants to uh, cut your disabilities, or people, so the, um, somebody wants to cut your food stamps, whatever. We all, we all hope 
to get good mail, nice mail, and um, but we usually don't. So when we do get this, you want to say how many mail it was? Oh yeah. So we've done the. We started with within the art collective, sending mail back and forth to each other, postcards, and then we we've expanded. So we're now running mobile art workshops where we're going out to other community access buildings, and we're collaborating with the wellness team. So we'll go out and they'll help make food, and, you know, and then if they have a food group or something, they'll come and make food, and then we'll make postcards together. And what we've done is we're asking people to make two postcards each, one that you're going to get back. So I'm making a postcard for myself, and then one that's gonna go to somebody else in the group, but it's gonna be random. So you're not gonna get to say, I only like Jack, so Jack gets my postcard. So you submit your postcards, and then I go back and mix them up, and then I start sending them out. So you don't know when it's gonna arrive, but you're gonna get some good mail. And then if we do it, if you do it twice, it really, the benefit is people come back. Mm -hmm. Like, we're trying to start going everywhere twice, like in close kind of period of time, because you're starting to build relationships. You're like, oh yeah, I liked that card. You know, it's a good way too to, we've used it to also reach out to members who haven't maybe been back, we haven't seen them for a while, send a postcard. We miss you, hope to see you soon. And when we did the mural art, we did a mural arts project in the Bronx, we had a service coordinator wrote notes to the participants to, and we put, sent them out, so inviting them to a project. Because it just meant so much more to get a, something good in the mail. Like, That's what I want to stress. It's, so easy, it's really nice to open up the mailbox and get a postcard that's creative, has a nice message. Everybody likes to get good mail. And most all of us, you don't have to be in the system or not, usually get junk mail or bills or things they don't want to read. But to open up your mailbox and see a beautiful collage by somebody you don't know, you know, it, 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 if you get your mail at 10 in the morning, it um, makes your day for the rest of the day, and it really makes you um, want to get... You told me yesterday, like, getting something from someone that you know, right. but had never seen her artistic right. side. Like, so even internally, it kind of shifted things. Like, just, like, seeing each other in a different light, like getting good mail helped, and it's inexpensive. Yeah, I got, a, I, got one, I got a postcard from a woman I know in my building, but I never really interacted with her, or I, you know, I said hello or whatever, and when I got her postcard, it just made me see a whole, whole new side of her, and it was beautiful. It was like, you know, I got to know her. I got to know her through her, through that little mail thing, and I got to um, know her. <laughs> So we're not doing this alone. Um, I'm trying to think of like, what would I want to know? What do I want to know when I go to conferences? And I think I often, you always hear, oh, that's a great idea, that's a great idea. Like, but nobody really talks about, I'm a staff of one, I'm full time, and now I've been lucky enough to bring two of our members on for, as studio assistants for, they each work six hours a week, and then art collective members volunteer but it's hard to take care of yourself and do all of this and really be present for people, like every day, like all the time, you know? So having like a staff, our wellness team, they're in some of these pictures, like they've helped out, our, our collective members helping each other. Last week, two people taught themselves how to make mono prints after I showed them once. You know, having materials out, people can make mistakes, we can just, whatever, just make stuff. And I'm constantly saying, like, just experiment. Like, take some of the pressure off. It doesn't have to be, you know, everybody wants to be Rembrandt. But, so that's my shout out, that big old pot of soup up there. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say? Yeah. Yeah. Um, how I got involved in the art collective <laughs> was Amy was dying to get me to come in and I'd be in the gym and she'd be coming by, come in, come in. I go, all right, I look in. And I had no, no art experience. I really had no art experience. I grew up in Brooklyn in the 1970s and you just weren't an artist in my neighborhood. But both my sisters were artists. I was known as always playing ball. 
But Amy, I said, I can't even draw stick figures. And she said, Jack, that's not art. That's not all art. It's my opinion of art, or my thought of what art is, was like Rembrandt and Renoir and things like that. But she um, made me realize so many things, art and conferences. I mean, you could look at that glass and see art, you know, and um, it just got me motivated. And now I could say I'm an artist, because, you know, I, uh, I made some shekels, you know. So, <laughs> and, um, and, um, and it's just a great, it's a great atmosphere. And I um, will ever be glad that I know the shop. So please, please follow Instagram. We're going to look y'all up. Um, check out our website, see our artists. And also, I want to extend that in the fall, we're going to run a mail art project. And so if anybody here wants to be a part, your organization, to be a part of it, we'll do a swap. So write me. So I have a question. Is this male identifying, or is it... Can you be female and still do the male art projects? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is such a jack joke. Uh -huh. <laughs> he wants I know I wait, like wait, you. Wait, wait, what's your, what's your, want to take, want to take the mic? Um. <laughs> he's got a, he's got a mic, mic joke. Mm -hmm. Wait, well, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I'm under pressure. No, but it is only for males. Oh, straight, <laughs> straight white males, that's all it's for. <laughs> But uh, if it was, I wouldn't be part of it, believe me. So, so if it was that, so I wouldn't be part of that. But it's for everybody, all encompassing, and everybody gets to be creative on their mail art and whatever you want, flowers, people write words, inspiring words. And like I said, it's just a, I think it's the best thing that I've been involved in is the, uh, the art talk. I got, in, I got in on it early, and we go to different sites, and everybody, you know, they don't understand the beginning of how it works, but once they get into it, they, um, it flows and people talk and joke and just, you know, and there's food and, you know, so it's, uh, it's great. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so um, email me. Let's, let's send art back and forth. That's us. Cool. Thank you.
I mean, I'm sorry about that, that you come from Wisconsin. I'm sorry. We got, <laughs> we got the circus, right? Um, so Alpha Workshops started in 1995. Um, it, it, it was started as a nonprofit in response to HIV and AIDS, right? So in 
Developers, uh, uh, other people that make business decisions. I don't know if there's another category. Okay. A lot of times we'll get return on investment, ROI, what's the cost, what's the cost benefit ratio, what's the impact, what's our, whatever the fancy words I don't know them yet, but I think I'm on this page, right? When you think about art and you think about return, engagement, inclusivity, Thank you, uh, Jen. Oh, no, I told you already, no applause, just through money, it's fine. I wrote a little something, but um, I wrote a little, I took some time to prepare a few words about my experience at Alpha. Um, when I joined, um, you know, I, I, I was coming from a, a burnt out space in my life. I stopped working, I was confused or whatever, and I was asking myself, you know, what's next? What am I going to do next? I was a long, long time cook for very, for 25 years, and that's all I knew how to do, is cook. I'm, I'm well seasoned at it, but I guess I was tired of it after a while. Um, so I, I came across a, a, a flyer with Alfred's information on it, and it said something about painting and learning how to learn how to techniques and apply them. Uh, hand, hand, hand painted wallpaper. It was all new to me. And I'm one of those types, if I'm curious about it, and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to find out. And that's what happened. I could open up a new, a new, a new way of life. I've never painted before. And um, I was leery about it, you know, it was new to me. And, you know, what if I'm not good enough? You know, are they going to laugh at me? But like I said, I'm eager and I'm, you know, persistent about it. And I thank Alfred for that opportunity. Age up in age had nothing to do with it. I've been probably for 25 years, 26 years. And that wasn't the issue. My issue was teaching me how to paint and express myself other than using a, a knife or a cotton pan. So uh, we, we've uh, acquired some techniques and, I, and the language you know, that uh, painters have, I'm familiar with from for war, for wood, for ivory, for um, you know, Building, um, it's so it's just so many techniques that you could you can you could pay a thousand dollars for for getting something real or just paint it the way it looks <laughs> and have the same result. <laughs> you know, and it's it's awesome. It's an awesome experience. So they had, like you said, there's a ten week introduction. Uh, I completed last January, and uh, I was at. Um, invited to do the advanced course. That was a little bit more intensive. It took a little bit more time. And um, uh, as with anything, it's a little tough and it's challenging. You know, but if you're that type of person, you know, you don't give up. And Alpha in general is a supportive environment. It's a loving environment. The instructors are, they're so patient, you know, and they're willing to meet you where you are. Everybody's in their own space at their own time. And we all come from different experiences. So, I thank Alpha for that. Um, 
like I said, I, in the 90s, I was um, diagnosed, but uh, immediately I became proactive. I, um, I tried to learn, you know, you know, what other options I could have, you know, to, other than sit home. So I, you know, I didn't give up on myself. Um, and, you know, for a long time, that was my, my thing. I'm not going to give up. And no matter what happens, there's always an opportunity. So if I can, it's just not, it's not much. But um, as a former activist and advocate, I know the importance or how important it is to promote self-expression and identity as an individual or a community. I told myself how to be proactive in the 90s, as I said. Since then, I've, I've become self-aware and accountable. As a former graduate of the Alpha Workshop Junior School, Introduction Advanced Job Readiness Program, I didn't talk about mm, it. Yeah, That's yeah. another mm. thing that she created. It's a very intense, but if you're, you're willing to take that look inside yourself, you, you'd be surprised. <coughs> so I completed that course, and, and I really, I, if I could take it again, I would. You know, but um, you know, Job Readiness is so, you know, my, what I want to say is uh, anything is possible if you open yourself up. Mm -hmm. And, and you'd be surprised what, what, what the energy, the universe will bring back to you. So, um, yeah, so thank you for Alpha. And so I have a new set of skills other than my pots and pans. I still have my pots and pans. <laughs> <laughs> I got some paint brushes and, and, and a lot of artwork. Um, I, I sold, we had an auction. I sold two pieces for the very first time.
But then you look at benefits, and if you work more than 19.5 hours a week, or if you have a different amount, you'll lose your housing, you'll lose your medical care, you'll lose your counseling services, your psychiatrist, food stamps, transit discounts. So it's really hard. How do you balance that? Right? One of the things that's really great about the arts is Awesome. <laughs> Great. It's amazing because everybody feels good and there's, there's gratitude there that is in benefit of the arts. So, I mean, I'm all about the combination of work housing. And even the finance people and the business builders <laughs> and looking at ways to, even today in the finance session, Molly something or other, thank you, Park, talked about creative innovation. That was the whole title of their finance presentation was about how can to rethink what we're doing, right? So I would say, because I'm not quite ready to see my artist yet, but I would say, let's let's figure out what that looks like together, right? Want to do it? Yeah, collaboration is possible, and it's really hard. So, can we, one question? Yeah. Where's the, what, there's somebody else in this room? I have three things. Go, oh, three things. All right. <laughs> but, um, Any questions? So we, we can have like 
five, ten more minutes or whatever. So if you want to, st if you want coffee, there's coffee out there. But I know this is way more jazzy than coffee is. <laughs> um, so is everybody cool with a couple of questions? Yeah. So if there are any, are there? Oh yeah, please go ahead. And if you're if you're leaving, please be quiet so we can hear the questions. Thanks. I just want to know, like, if we know people that want to vote people, how do we? Yeah, like how do we? Yeah. <laughs> so you, we know people that want to go to you, like how do we do that? Do you want to go to you? Oh, for Alpha? Alpha. Alpha. Yeah. So Alpha Workshops, if you Google it, it'll be up on there. It's alphaworkshops.org, A-L-P-H-A. -A. It's based on the uh, Bauhaus concept that came over. Um, that is fascinating. Anyway, yeah, the color is yellow, blue, and red. Please, you work. Um, Alpha workshops, A L P H A workshops with an S dot org. And on there is uh, both the studio and the school information. Um, the school information uh, is all up to date. Um, and it talks about the requirements uh, that you have to have some kind of documented disability for entrance. Um, and that uh, we do work with Access VR, but we also have private dollars that come in to help support. Um, if you don't know what Access VR is, for individuals who have disabilities, you know, need to re-enter or regain uh, a work set, right? Um, so, alphaworkshops.org, um, Google Alpha. Uh, I did do the slides. Thank you. Great question. All right, I think we can call it. Oh, if yeah? you want to talk to us, come on up. Great. Yeah. 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 Yeah.